Uh, one says start video, so let me click on it. Oh, yes, yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. It's coming up. Yeah, yeah I had Yay. clicked on it before, but it wouldn't work. Okay, we got it. Yeah, we, we sometimes have a, have a little trouble getting started with these things. We do. Well, it's good to see you again. Yeah, good to talk to you. Uh, so uh, when do we start? Are we ready? We're ready to go. So maybe we could just start with you introducing yourself and because there's a lot of new people on, just about self-empowerment and dowsing and just a little bit in your simple terms as to what you do. Okay. I have been working with energy for how long? Probably 50 years. And uh, I use something called dowsing. And when we get into it, I can explain dowsing. It's simply a way to get information um, that is not normally accessible to the average person. Uh, and I'll explain pendulums once we get into this and uh, a little bit about what dowsing is. But uh, I have reached people in, I think, about 150 countries around the world. And uh, what I really do is work to empower people because most people do not realize how powerful they are. And if they don't know it, they don't do anything about it. So I do my best to show people what is possible to be done with the mind and uh, what, uh, what you folks can do. Uh, if it's okay with you, we'll take questions today. Uh, you you kind of run the show as to what you want to do. And uh, you know me pretty good. You've been in a couple of my classes. We've done, what, three or four of these uh, uh, Zoom sessions. So um, just um, you kind of provide the questions, and I'll see if I can provide the answers. Yeah. Well, look, basically, your whole philosophy is about you can transform anything with energy. And a lot of your self-empowerment you talk about is your words and some of your expressions, you know, and maybe like about focusing on what you want and not what you don't want and things like that. And some of that I find very empowering because we live in a world where we're told we've got to think of others and we've got to do this for everyone and we've got to fix this person's problem and that person's problem. And I think the starting point with self-empowerment is just your philosophy because I found that very empowering and life-changing for me. Well, let me just give the folks the principles of my work. Principle number one is that all things, including beliefs, thoughts, memories, and opinions, are forms of energy. The intelligent human mind has the ability to transform energy. That means we can take something in negative and transform it into something positive. Uh, principle number two is energy is impressed upon matter. Thoughts and actions are energy. Our physical body is matter. So wherever we put our physical body, we are affected by the energy of that place or we're affected by the energy of the people we associate with. So many people work in a low energy environment and they wonder why they're tired all the time. It's because they're working with people or in an environment that literally drains their energy, but they don't seem to know that. And principle number three, I borrowed from Einstein, energy follows thought. And matter of fact, uh, the country music singer, Willie Nelson, has got a song out now called Energy Follows Thought. And so you can Google that. Just Willie Nelson, Energy Follows Thought, listen to the song. I'm glad Willie made that song, and I hope he reaches several million people with it because maybe it'll wake folks up as to what is possible. So uh, my philosophy on things are really based on those three simple principles. And I've been practicing it for 50 years. And uh, we've got some really good stories. You uh, and your group are one of them about how we cleaned up the lake uh, there that supplies the water to 2 million people in Perth, Australia. Whenever we did that, I think you had about 60 some people on uh, the, uh, the uh, video that day. And uh, 40 of them, if I remember correctly, were from Perth. Yes. I received 27 thank you emails from people in Perth thanking me for giving them good tasting water. So yeah. I, I, I was really pleased about that. I was really glad to do that for the folks. And uh, I, I did a show recently with a couple of people in Alaska, 
And they said their water there was terrible. So right at the end of the show, I said, well, go get a glass of water, bring it back in front of the camera, take a drink, because I want to see the expression on your face. And uh, the faces lit up like, this water is, is really good. Well, that was the plan. So uh, that's just one of the things that can be done with the power of thought. Yeah. Uh, and it's what the rest of the world knows is impossible, but I don't know that. Yeah. Well, if you think so, of it, a doubting can also be done with healing work. I've got a really good story. I just got this morning. Now it's uh, right now uh, six ten uh, in the morning where, where I live. Uh, this email uh, came in late last night. Uh, I will just kind of go over the the uh, whole idea without any specifics. But um, this person that contacted me owns a shop in which they do uh, uh, produce customized products for people. They had a one customer that was so upset with them. Uh, they had tried every way to please this person, uh, to treat them fair, nothing worked. The, the cu customer just continued to harass them. Uh, so they wrote me. Within a few, I'd say two hours, I got an email back with a copy of the email that the unhappy customer had sent, totally different, very peaceful, very polite. So I have no idea who this person is. I want uh, no idea at all. They gave me a name, but that's all I had to go by. I don't even know where they live, uh, anything. But uh, the the customer went from being terribly aggressive and hostile to being very kind and polite uh in a very short time i would say less than an hour so and this kind of energy work can save people a lot of problems it can make life easier but if you don't know about it it doesn't do you any good so how many people do we have on the show tonight today we have 73 at the moment. Okay. All right. So how do you how do you want to run the show today? Well, let's um it's always good to get the principles and then of course we start to do real life stuff, which is always good. But um one of the things I'd like like for example, when you talked about the customer and making them better, I know what you mean because we've done the same thing with business people, with clients who've been angry with us. I've used dowsing that you taught me to measure the integrity of people I do business with. And um, I'm presuming that when you fix up the customer, did you just dispossess the spirit guides like we talk about or dispossess them or check if they are possessed? Like what are the kind of tests that you do? Like, you know, and things like that, because that's like something that you did that you taught me to do. And we were doing on our politicians last year during COVID and seeing some extraordinary results. Okay. Well, what, the first thing I did, I found out the customer had, I believe it was 22 very bad entities. Uh, when I say very bad, I have a scale on which I measure them. And uh, the, the person wasn't potentially real dangerous, but they were just not a good person. The entities were pretty strong. Not only that, they had bad spirit guides. That's a bad combination. Uh, then I found out that that person's spirit guides were not compatible with the store owner. Uh, that's another problem. So I cleaned up all of those problems. They also had very aggressive archetypes. Archetype is a trait or a characteristic that affects a person's behavior. So I took away the aggressive archetype from them, gave them archetype of kindness. So that, that's pretty much it right there. That changed, it just changed everything. Yeah. Yeah, we um we did that exact thing last year when we had a very, very um big lockdown in where I live, where the government's locked everything down. And I can remember going through with my son and checking how how possessed and, and how bad the spirit guides were of our politicians. And they were, it was pretty bad. And we, we spent about half an hour cleaning all that up, cleaning up anything we could find. And after we finished it, within about an hour, they did a press conference 
and their whole tone was different. You know, they were, they were apologizing. They were saying, we're going to lift the lockdown really quickly. And they did. And we saw a number you did of a good job. You did a real good job because in my opinion, politicians are about the toughest group to work on. <laughs> Very hard. I mean, I, I can clean up serial killers, make them less dangerous, pretty, pretty simple. But working on politicians is much more difficult than working on an average person. I would agree with that one. <laughs> so, yes. So you, you did a miracle there. Yeah, it was hard going and you've got to keep doing it pretty regularly because it takes only takes a couple of days and they start picking up some new friends again. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, uh, I'm really pleased that you're doing work like that and I'm perfectly uh willing to help you any way that i can give you different ideas whatever but one of the things you might want to consider addressing is archetypes yeah and uh they probably have archetypes of superiority uh archetypes of control uh so you might want to take those away from them and give them archetypes of humility and kindness now, I, I, for those listening out there, I do want to say this. Not everybody is equal. There's a, there's a belief out there that every, all people are the same. That's simply not true. That's never been true. There's no reason whatever I would ever believe anything like that. People are different. So the same thing does not necessarily work the same way for every person. Yeah, well, I think you once said that comparing someone like you to a serial killer, you're not equal or a pedophile. You know, pedophiles... A bit off executed. I had no idea the phone was going to ring. Just a minute. Just a minute. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I should have taken it off the hook earlier. I mean, here it is, six fifteen, and somebody's already calling me. So uh, uh, that's. <laughs> That's the way I handle that. You just don't answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, I, well, um, I guess the question is, and I'm trying to think how to word this. Is it a good idea to let the whole world know what you're doing? And in my opinion, it may not be, but uh if you have a group of people that you can work with which obviously you do uh maybe keep it within your group and that's why i'm i'm thinking here i know you put these videos out for the public um uh, so i'm not sure you should say a whole lot of things that you don't want the whole world to know including the politicians yeah There's no point in attracting unwanted attention to yourself. Yeah. Understood. So what I was going to ask you as well, Raymond, was with, um, often when you come before, you've had some general insights into what's going on with the energy and what you've noticed. And when I first saw you, there was an average energy reading, which has since changed quite a lot. And I can remember you were saying that the, energy of a healthy city was say around 20,000 it was at one stage and then you were just noticing about the ability to read energy of a group and just observations as to what's going on in the, in the planet and things like that so I'd love to get some kind of current update because it's been about nine months to a year since we last you know talked okay now Warren you're gonna have to slow down a little bit because with your accent I'm having trouble keeping up with you I know okay. you were talking about the energy changing but I didn't get every word but I can go ahead and start. I have been measuring energy since uh, 1998. And the energy has gone uh, up, increased tremendously. Now, uh, the obvious question would be, how do I know that? Well, I measure energy on a numeric scale. And uh, without getting into the numbers very much, because I often wonder if my numbers are correct. They seem unreasonably high. But on the other hand, we are able to do things now that we couldn't do 10 years ago, maybe even three, four, five years ago. 
uh, I noticed that the energy would come up to a higher level and hold for a while, then it would move on up to another level. And I've been observing this for 25 years. Uh, I didn't really understand it, still don't, but I can tell that it is happening. So the higher the energy of the earth, and I call it energy of the earth, there may be a better way to explain it, but that's the best way I know, uh, the more things that we can accomplish. Uh, so you remember in the last uh, time we talked, which was what, a year ago, uh, you had 57 women uh, that were listening. I don't know how many you have today. Yes. And I asked a question, how many of you feel more empowered now than you did three months ago? I remember you, we did this, it was a year ago, this past yes. September. Yes. I distinctly remember it was September. Okay. I had done something on the 28th of May, uh, but I didn't really tell anybody much what I had done at the time. So I just asked you to do a survey and ask the participants, all the female participants to write in, do you feel more empowered now than you did before the 1st of June? That would have been the 1st of June of uh, two, uh, 2021. And you gave me the figures. Uh, three people felt less empowered. The other 54 felt far more empowered. Okay, I've been doing the same experiment in every class that I teach. Or every time that I'm making a talk to uh, a group, especially if there's uh, females in the class, I'm still getting to about the same ratio. About 5% really haven't noticed anything. The other 95% have noticed that they feel much more empowered. That is one of the biggest things that we've ever done. Now, I can't say that it went worldwide, but I can say that I have asked this question to females in various parts of the world, especially Australia and the US uh, and some in Europe and I'm getting the same responses. Now, of course, we don't reach everybody in the world. There's a lot, uh, we've reached, I think, uh, 150 countries, but it might've been only one person in each country, uh, for, or at least for some of them. I, I don't really know that. I have no way to know how many in each country we reach, but based on what we have, think we've learned, the feedback that we're getting, we literally reached around the world with that. Now, it may take a while for it to really settle in and make a major difference. A lot of things do. Some things just don't happen overnight. But uh, that was probably the biggest project that we've ever done that we could see some success from. Now, the, the lake the, <clears throat> there that provides the water for Perth, Australia, that was also a major project because I had never tried to clean up that much water for that many people. So what I'm saying is this, the reason we could do it is because we have more energy now than we ever had before. Yeah. So uh, I would say if you have an idea to do something, go ahead and give it a try because you will probably succeed. And of course, if you don't do anything, it's nothing's gonna happen. Do something, something will probably happen. <clears throat> So um, where, where do you want to go from here? Well, I'm really interested, like what you said about the female empowerment. So you basically did a project, just so everyone can understand, where you raised the overall level of female empowerment across the globe. Is that correct? And that's not quite correct. That was the final result, but that's not what I actually originally did. <clears throat> the I have excuse me i read the bible a lot uh, back uh, when i was a teenager and i'm not an authority on it by any means but i read it a lot and i read about the laws that people had back then uh, about what they could eat what they couldn't eat the type of clothes that they could wear or couldn't wear like they were not allowed to wear a garment made of two different kinds of material <clears throat> you couldn't wear a robe made of cotton and wool that was forbidden uh, 
you could only eat a meat meat from an animal, excuse me. <clears throat> you could only eat meat from an animal that parted a hoof and chewed a cud. That meant uh, cow, sheep, and goats. Uh, so there was just a number of laws. One is, I remember um, that men could sell their daughters for a profit, and they did. And all at once it hit me like a lightning bolt. I can't respect a culture that sells their daughters. This is ridiculous. So uh, I, I found all at once where I had been raised very religiously, I uh, started finding a whole lot of things wrong with it. Uh, so uh, then uh, there was a verse in there that because of the uh, sin of Eve uh, being deceived by the serpent and eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they were cast out of the Garden of Eden and women uh, would suffer the pain of childbirth because of the sin of, sins of Eve. I checked with someone who had spent four years in a religious cottage to make sure I had my facts right on that. Uh, and sure enough, I did. I got a little bit more information from her, but it appeared to me <clears throat> that there had been a curse put on women. So what we did, we broke the curse. In 5,000 years, that has never happened. Not to my knowledge. Now, I realize that if there's some folks out there that are extremely religious, they're going to be upset about this. That's their problem, not mine. Wow. I do not take a poll, a survey, to see whether people agree with me or not. I do what I think needs to be done. Everybody else can deal with it the way they want to. Yeah. And I, I realize imagine. this is going to shock a lot of people, but so be it. People need to be shocked. They need to wake up to reality. Yeah, well, it'd be very, the other thing that would be really good to go from here is that when we're often on the webinars, we, um, we, measure, we measure the energy of, of some of the biggest cities of Australia. And we actually made a bit of a difference last time we did this. So I'd be very interested for us to go through and measure and see what we can do um, just to help raise the energy of our cities like Perth, Sydney, Melbourne. I'd be very interested. <clears throat> well, I think raising the energy of places is good. Uh, it's always good, I think, if you can do it. Uh, but it depends on the quality of people you have. Now, <laughs> only Australian people I've been affiliated with are very good people, uh, which well, that's kind of that's really about the only kind of people I deal with anyway. Uh, I'm very particular who I deal with. And if they aren't of good quality people and have integrity, I don't even want to talk to them. I just uh, I don't make any bones about it. That's just the way it is. Uh, but I think uh, we can probably help you out here on this. Because <clears throat> I work for a, a let's say, a very famous uh, singer, I won't give any details on this, uh, that in a concert in Russia, there was about 15, 16,000 people in the concert. And I asked the singer to send me an email, when they, excuse me, <clears throat> when they went on stage. And I said, I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do to make this group uh, very receptive to you and uh, kind and polite and then the person contacted me again when the show was over and she said, they said we've never had a show with the people of this kind enthusiastic uh, they were just uh, we, we changed 16,000 people in the audience that day now in all honesty <laughs> I didn't know that could be done but I didn't know it couldn't so uh, that was done three years ago. Now, before that, could we have done it 10 years ago? I doubt it. Why? Because we didn't have the energy to do it with. But right now, we have more energy to work with. I can't say more than in the history of the world because I don't know that. But I can say we've got a lot more now than we have in the 25 years 
that I have been measuring energy. So while we have this energy, we might as well use it. So can, <clears throat> can we change the world to a degree? Yeah, to a degree, I just don't know to what degree. And it probably depends on where it is. Um, with, mm, what I did last night to one person, a dissatisfied customer, can probably be done possibly to thousands of people. I have to say possibly because I don't know that for a fact. I try to be as honest as I can on doing this, but so let's get into the depossession. <clears throat> the best way to raise the energy of any group or place is to remove negative entities. And I've had a lot of experience with that, but not on real, mm, real large crowds. That 15,000, 15, 16,000 people was the largest group to my knowledge that I have worked on. Uh, but now that's also what we did to clean up the water on the lake there that supplies all the water for Perth. We had to clean up the water. I've never found a lake that was that bad. Uh, I was a little surprised. Uh, also, from what you told me, the activities going on around that lake were pure evil. Yeah. So that was a major cleanup on that. But what it did, <clears throat> it literally changed the taste of the water. I mean, I had 27 people write and tell me that. So that really got my attention. So what does that tell us? That tells us that if we get rid of the entities, and in that case, we had demonic forces there in the lake. I distinctly remember that, that we can change the taste of water for 2 million people. So I really admire what you're doing with people there. And that's why I agree to do these uh, talks with you because uh, uh, I wanna help you get the word out. So wh you. where do you want to start today on cleaning up something? I'll just, we'll just go through something and see what we can do. Well, let's let's start with um let me think. Um let's just start with um let's just start with, with Perth City as a whole and the politicians. Let's just kind of and the government generally and what's going on. That would be a starting point, something simple. Well, okay, now Warren, um I've never done this something like this to be filmed before. And I'm a little hesitant to do it. And I'll tell okay. you why. I don't particularly want the opposing side to know what I do. Okay. And I see you you are recording this. So um I'll pause the recording I'm if going you like. To... Pardon? I'll pause the recording if you like. Wait a minute, say again. I'm not I'm oh I said I I will pause I will pause the recording. I will I will pause it for this thing. How's that? Oh okay, because it's still showing it's being recorded. I'll be glad to do that. Yes. I'll be glad to do that, Warren. Uh, but it's probably not necessary because I cleared the entire group this morning before we started. Oh, okay. Uh, I have I've done something different this year. Uh, up until this year, I had always waited till I got everybody in class. And I would go through, and you've been there, you saw how I did it. I'd find out who lives in a haunted house, who works in a low energy environment. And I would measure the energy of the entire group. And then I would start making corrections and the energy of the group would go up and people would feel it. Well, it was a real good plan, it worked. But I had an idea this year, why don't I start a week early and put them in my morning energy clearing session and see what happens. I didn't have to clean up anybody when they got there. The classes went much better. Uh, everything went better. So for those out there that are listening and don't know, I have an energy clearing program. You can go to my website, RaymondGraceFoundation.org, sign up for it, uh, where I do an energy clearing for $25 a month, uh, less than a, or about a dollar a day. Uh, and also within that clearing, I give people good drinking water. I do my best to keep good drinking water flowing into through the pipes into everybody's house. And I get a lot of testimonials back that this stuff works. 
well I intended for it to work um and I do it as a group please understand I do not need to know the name of your dog and cats or kids uh I work on all the people that live in your house that's that's it uh and I do it as a group because when the people are in class I don't really know uh, who they are where they live or anything about them but I could do a clearing on everybody it's just like the 16,000 people in the concert in Russia I don't know who those people are but I could do a clearing for them long enough to get through the concert uh, without any kind of major problems and it worked well that's the way I do my energy clearings uh, every morning I started out doing them once a month and I thought well that's not enough let's do them once a week and then COVID uh, scare came on the scene and I thought, well, people probably need it more often. So I just started doing it every day for people. I always like to give people more than what they're paying for. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that out. If you want to check my website, RaymondGraceFoundation.org and sign up for it, that's fine. Also, if you want a free newsletter, you can go there and sign up for it. There's no cost to that. I send out one, try to send out one a month. Uh, with some good ideas in it. So you'd be welcome to get it if you want to sign up for it. Okay. Um, so let's see, Warren, what have we got to do now? What if we put the spirit of truth in all the politicians and the officers and all the people that work for them? I never thought of that before until just now. See, when we, we get together, I never really know what we're going to do. I just wait and see what comes up. That's a good idea. I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, truth, uh, well, truth and integrity is probably about one and pretty much one and the same, but it wouldn't hurt to put integrity because <clears throat> if we have better people making laws, we're going to have a whole better society. Uh, and that's just that's just common sense. Okay. Now, as far as the people that we're working on here today, all you folks listening, uh, as of yesterday morning at this time, 24 hours ago, well, it's evening for you folks, uh, 24 hours ago, the average energy of one of these folks was only about 200. Now, 200 is right at rock bottom that's not good right now their energy is more like sixty thousand. that's a big change now i sometimes hesitate to tell you how high i have my energy clearing group of people because it's really not even reasonable or believable but i've been getting consistent answers on it for over three years we have got that group of people higher than I have ever thought it was possible. And that's why better things are happening to them, I guess. Uh, we got we get a lot of surprises in this work. We don't really know for sure what's going to happen. We just do something. So let's see here. I went through a list this morning. You don't have anybody there that's possessed. Um, everybody has their soul back. I did a... a, a soul clearing on everyone this morning and have a soul clearing it's because uh, the soul leaves the body i told you about fragmented souls i don't know why it sounds weird but i've been dealing with it for a few years i found out i can fix it i just still don't know much about it though all right um let's see here uh let's check how much love was in uh, the folks bodies as 24 hours ago about 20 percent so much loves in their bodies now well about 200 percent sometimes it goes way over 100 percent on, on doing things why because we took away all the negative emotions this morning and put in the spirit of love so uh, now do i know who's listening out there i have no idea but you don't that's a good thing about this you don't really have to know the individual people that you're working on i seldom do and i realized for people who don't know anything about energy work and all this is very new to them they think how does this guy know this 
Well, that's a part of what I teach. This is just part of what can be done with the human mind if you will cultivate your mind and practice and work at getting things done, which is what you're doing. And you're doing things to help other people. I really admire you for that. Um, so I want to talk to everybody out there that's listening, folks. You are capable of doing more than anyone ever told you you could do. So that's why Warren and I are telling you this today. If we don't tell you, probably nobody else ever will. And that's why I'm, I, I like to talk to people, uh, groups like this, because the fact that you are listening tells me that you're interested. I don't think you did this just because you had nothing else to do. So if you're listening, I want to provide you some decent information. So um, uh, the bottom line is you can make your life a lot better by the way you think. So let me quote a couple of philosophers on this. There was an old German philosopher back in the 1700s, and his last name was Goethe, G-O-T-H-E. I don't really know exactly how to pronounce that. But he said, see a man as he is, and he'll get worse. See him as he could be, and he will improve. Well, uh, he said the same thing in a different set of words than what Einstein said of energy follows thought. So uh, uh, Christmas is coming up here, and some people have traditions of getting together with people, and there may be uh, family in-laws that they don't particularly care to be around or whatever. Well, folks, the more you think about those people being grouchy and disagreeable, the more grouchy and disagreeable they are likely to be. Uh, so it, why don't you do an experiment? If you're going to have a family gathering party or whatever, why don't you imagine everybody being happy, being friendly, and getting along? This should be a real good place to start because today's the 21st. That's only going to be four days from now. Um, and the best way to learn how to do anything is to do it. So start with your mind of thinking of what you want. That's the first rule of success is think of what you want instead of what you don't want. And if you're thinking about you got in-laws that you really hope don't show up at a Christmas party because you don't get along with them and you start thinking about how all of their bad characteristics, they're not going to improve any. But if you create a mental picture of everybody getting along, being friendly with each other and being happy, there's a good possibility you can make it happen. So you have a lot more control over your future than anybody's ever told you you did. And that's why I'm telling you. Uh, we actually, we all create our own future. And we create it by the way we think, the way we act, and the decisions we make. And if we don't like who we are in life, we got to make better decisions, think differently, and act better differently. That's, that's, I have no troublesome people in my life because I have a low tolerance policy for troublesome people. I don't let them come to see me. I don't go see them. I don't talk to them. If I can't get along with people, I don't want to argue with them, so I just keep them away from me. Uh, I do not want to go through life arguing with people, and I have a rather arrogant way of saying this. The reason I do not argue with people is I am willing to let them be wrong. I like that. It's see, when we, with, when we argue with people, we're trying to convince them to see our point of view. If we don't really give a damn if they say our point of view or not, there's no nothing to argue about. Life is a lot more peaceful that way. Another thing, I live as a hermit. I live so far back in the mountains that uh, cell phones don't even work here. So uh, I find that... Uh, um, my life goes a lot better uh, living a lot of time just out here in the woods, in the mountains. So um, I realize if you live in a high-rise apartment and work it with several hundred people, you don't have that option. Well, use those people to practice on. Uh, I learned, uh, I've got films that shows you how to do this. I've got six films that's a... a uh, condensed version of my class. They're available at my website, uh, raymondgrace.us. 
and one is change energy, change your life. That shows you how to do an exorcism on any number of people. It's just what we did a few minutes ago here for some of the uh, government agencies there. Well, we, we actually did them a favor. Uh, you, you always do whenever you clean people up. So you're not hurting anybody, you're helping them. They might not want your help at the time, but there's really not a whole lot they can do about it. If uh, I really, uh, I say it this way, I can depossess a person whether they like it or not. Uh, and the dowsing societies have made way too many rules. They're, they're good people, but they just made too many rules. And one of the rules that they have is you cannot do anything uh, for anyone without their permission. There's absolutely no truth whatever in that, folks. Don't fall with that stuff. <clears throat> because I tell people, I can deep, <clears throat> I can depossess a serial killer or a serial rapist, whether they like it or not. They're not going to ask for my help. Why? Because they like who they are. They like doing what they're doing. Okay. Uh, so we can depossess evil people without their knowledge and certainly without their permission. So don't, uh, don't let organizations disempower you by telling you you can't do something. Uh, everything they told me I couldn't do, I did anyway. So uh, I'm not one, one for following directions very well. I find out we do better if we make our own directions. And there's only one person on the planet you got to live with, and that's you. Everyone else is a matter of choice. But you can make other people more agreeable if you think of them as being that way and clean them up, take away their grouchy archetypes. Uh, a lot of people have no love in their body. Uh, send them a spirit of love, peace, happiness. There's nothing wrong with this. Now, they may reject it. They have the ability to do that. But then again, they may accept it. So uh, the bottom line is, think of people the way you would like for them to be and to act toward you. And the odds are that you will surprise yourself in how well you succeed. And the worst you'll do is nothing. And when the worst you'll do is nothing, you might as well try and do something. So where are we going next, Warren? <laughs> I love it. Um, just one question that was asked about the videos recommended by you. They're on your YouTube channel. Is that right, Raymond, your videos? Uh, yes and no. I have made over 80 films. A lot of them are on the Raymond Grace YouTube channel. The ones that are a condensed version of my class are not there. They are available for sale at RaymondGrace.us. And uh, they, you can get them as downloads because, you see, we had to stop shipping to Australia simply because of the ridiculously high postage prices. We don't like to have to charge people so much for shipping, but the, uh, the shipping prices went up that uh, we, we actually had to stop shipping anything for a while. We couldn't ship from U.S. to Australia. The post office wouldn't even let us do that. But now we can but the shipping prices are just way too expensive for, uh, we had to start letting the people or buyers uh, pay for the shipping. And we don't really want to have to do that. It's just too expensive. That's why we want to sell you downloads. You can get them instantly and you have no shipping cost. Yeah. So we, we have greatly upgraded our business to what it used to be. Uh, at one time, we had to ship everything physical, DVDs, CDs, books, everything. Now, we can send it all digital with no, sh no shipping cost involved. And not only that, and we could lower the price on the products that we had. Uh, so we're actually uh, uh, selling films now cheaper than we did five years ago. That's good. In fact, one question I was going to ask you, and it'd be good, good to actually... Um, so people can see how you do it. So let's say we wanted to clean up um, a business, like we'll just see, just really make sure that the business was radi radiating on the spirit of prosperity. I mean, we could do it, say, with my business, the Global Wealth Club, because I know there's a process that you would walk through, like checking competitors, checking things like that. So are you able to do that live? And then that will give people a bit of an, you know, a bit of an idea as to how 
you can actually go through and check a business or check check a situation. Well, let's keep, we'll keep this real simple. If you own a business, number one thing I would tell you to do is put it on a frequency of prosperity. Now you will say, what's that? Well, to my knowledge, every element has a frequency and the word frequency means the speed at which an element vibrates. So let's just talk a little about frequency so it'll make some sense to you. Uh, I found that every race of people on the planet each has their own specific frequency at which they vibrate. Each animal uh, has a specific frequency. Uh, an elephant will vibrate at a different frequency than a rabbit. Each plant a tomato plant will vibrate at a different frequency than an apple tree. Uh, gold will vibrate at a different frequency than silver. So uh, each, each species and each element has its own specific frequency. And people are wondering, how do you know this? Well, I doubt to find out. Well, how did you think of that? Well, it just came to my mind one day that um, uh, to check something like that out. I'd heard the word frequency, but I didn't know much about it, but it's the speed at which an element vibrates. And all of nature vibrates at its own specific frequency. The problem with humans is they're not vibrating at the proper frequency. Uh, and it's because of exposure to electric current. It took a while to figure that one out. But I found that uh, jungle people the Aborigines that were way out there with no contact uh, much with the rest of the world and people that lived in very remote places were vibrating at the proper frequency, whereas the city people weren't. And I finally figured out it was because of exposure to electric current. Well, uh, what you can do here, and you might have to do it every day, but you can neutralize the negative effect of electric current upon you. Neutralize is a word I use a lot because it makes it uh, nil, void, uh, where it has no effect upon you. Now, uh, let me elaborate a little bit more. I was in a, a class one day taught by, at the time, the president of the American Society of Doubters, who uh, had us find a noxious energy zone out in his yard. Well, we could find it with our dowsing rods or pendulums or whatever but we didn't know what it was. And uh, he said, well, you're right. That's where uh, there's an oxygen energy zone there. And tell me what causes it. Well, we looked around, we didn't know what caused it. So he told us, he said, it's that transformer on that electric power pole across the street. And I think, okay, that's very interesting. So after uh, an hour or more, I asked him, I said, let's take the class and go out and find the noxious energy zone again. He said, we've already found it. Yeah, let's go find it again. And he was just arguing with me. He said, well, it's useless. We know where it is. Well, just humor me. He said, well, you take the class out there and find it. I did. Took him out there. Nobody could find it. Well, here he comes with the thousand rod. I'll show you where it is. He couldn't find it either. He said, what did you do with it? I neutralized the negative effect of the transformer. When I did that, the energy field disappeared. Now, I think uh, you can do this on a very wide area. I don't really know how far, but um, if it worked on one transformer, I figure I can make it work on everything else. Now, uh, a lot of people are afraid of uh, 5G, and I don't even know what 5G is. I hear about it, but I didn't bother to investigate it. But I don't find that I'm affected by anything uh, because I just neutralize any negativity out there. So uh, there's no reason to live in fear of people because whatever you fear will probably come upon you. So uh, if you can empower yourself to the point that you are not afraid of anything, then uh, you've, you've made a real big step. Uh, and your life is going to go better. Uh, people are afraid of COVID. They're afraid of, uh, oh, afraid of most everything. Well, you, if you watch TV, you are programmed to be afraid. That's why I don't watch TV. 
Uh, I let nature entertain me. I let my friend, uh, friends are entertain me. I uh, associate in an environment that is without much negativity. I mean, if you go out and walk through the forest and look at the, at the streams and animals and so on, there's not much negativity out there at all to bother you. So it's totally different than living in a city. And that's why I choose to live out in the wilderness. Uh, because everything out here is pretty clean. But if you aren't that fortunate and you have to live in an apartment building or around other people, then take this information we're providing and the information I have in those films and clean up your environment. That's why I made the films. Uh, I didn't make them just for pastime. I made them to help people. So uh, we've got some pretty useful information, but it's not going to help you unless you use it. So uh, let's see where we're going with this. Uh, uh, we, we talk about putting uh, your business on the right frequency. All right. The number eight is the frequency for prosperity. Now, the Asian people know this more than Caucasian people because they uh, want to put eights in their phone numbers and house numbers and ta car tags and all that. There's, there's a reason for it. And, and I think they're right. Uh, I keep it real simple. Uh, let me see if I can show you here. I think I've showed you before, but we may have different people listening today. But right here, I just get one of these and put in my billfold. And uh, it works. And uh, you might say, well, how do you know it works? Well, it's got a lot of hundred dollar bills in it. One way that's physical evidence. So uh, I only believe what I see work. Everything else is a theory. It might be right. It might not. So I only believe what I see work. So ever since I put that eight in that billfold, it had quite a bit of money in it. So you put also in your um, office. So where do you put the again, number eight? Sorry, where do you put the number eight, Raymond? Yeah, I put it on. If you have a business, a storefront business, or place where people come in, put uh, put it on your front door. If you operate a business uh, on your computer, just stick a little uh, sticker on your computer. Uh, you say that's superstition. It may be. I don't care as long as it works. Yeah. You see, that's the only thing I ever care about. When I get new information, number one is, does it work? Number two is, does it help? If it works and it helps, I don't even ask any more questions. What I find is some people went to the wrong school and stayed too long, and they continually ask question after question. It's like they have to understand every detail of something. What I have observed about these people is they never do accomplish anything. All they ever do is ask questions. And I won't, I'll talk, I'll answer two or three questions. And if they keep questioning, I said, this conversation's over. I won't even talk to them. Why? Because they're not going to do anything anyway, except ask questions. So the, the best, th the greatest act of faith is just taking it for granted that it's going to work. Just assume it's going to work. Because whether you believe you can or whether you believe you can't, you're probably right. Yeah, you see, this is why I did with the politicians. I just decided, well, I don't see why we can't if I live in this state and I've got to put up with the laws and the decisions that they make in our state. And that tells me I've got an ability to do something about it. And I, one, of the, one of the projects I've been doing, Raymond, that might interest you is that there's been a lot of talk in the world about this really, really bad food shortages and about energy. And I was like, that doesn't apply. That's not going to apply here. So we we created a I created an impression of energy prosperity, abundance of energy and gas, and abundance of um food. And literally, they announced about three months ago that where I live is the only state in Australia where we have an abundance of energy. Now I all I know is it worked because we've been doing that project for a while to give our state an abundance of energy and gas and natural resources. Well, you're doing a wonderful job. That's why I, that when you invited me to come on to talk today, I'm I'm here. I wanted to help you out. 
No, I appreciate it because I'm always glad. I'm always glad to help people that are doing something that makes a positive difference in the world. Uh, because I can't do it all myself. No, so I'm perfectly, perfectly willing to help you folks. Um, um, see, you'll always accomplish. Well, I always said this: you'll accomplish more believing you can than believing you can't. Yeah. So whenever you start to do something, just say, well, this just might work. Let's find out. And chances are you will surprise yourself with your success. Like you said, if you, if you don't try and don't do something different, and I remember one of the things that you told, told me about years ago was how there was that serial killer over in, Virginia, and you actually use dowsing to be able to find where the serial killer was, because you said, "Well, why, why can't I not? Why, maybe I can do it." Well, uh, the story on that, if I, if we're talking about the same story, <clears throat> is he disappeared for seven years. Nobody knew what happened to him. Then he appeared again. The person, the woman, he pulled over to assault on the road, recognized him, and he killed himself. He just shot himself on the spot. Uh, so I didn't know that was gonna happen, but I certainly wasn't opposed to it. Uh, but the fact that after I depossessed him, he didn't attempt anything for seven years. Now, I didn't really know who the guy was, but uh, you don't have to know who someone is in order to affect them. Um, because I have worked with a number of uh, uh, cases of crime, assault, murder, and I didn't know who the person was at all. But you can depossess a, a, a person, and, and we, sh we should do this. I mean, it makes them less dangerous because if a person is possessed with a serial killer or serial rapist mentality, we have the ability to take the Indies away from them. And generally speaking, when you take the Indies away from them, then they won't commit those violent acts. So learning how to depossess people is a real valuable thing to do to create a safer environment for everybody. Yeah, and I've, I've been doing yeah. this for years. I, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that it works. I have worked with the police a little bit, but not very much. I seem to make them nervous for some reason. Uh, but I mean, I'm happy to work with them, but they they will very seldom ever ask me to work for them. Um, no, you... It just falls within their, their mentality, I guess. But I don't really need them to ask me if I know it was a dangerous person that's uh, out there, I just go ahead and take care of it myself. And that's the simplest thing to do. And also I would say this, if you do something like this, you probably shouldn't even tell anybody uh, because it's just going to attract unwanted attention to yourself and there's no reason to do that. Uh, just do what needs to be done and keep quiet about it and nobody will ever know you ever did it. Yeah, one, one, uh, one other thing I'd like you to tell everyone about one of my most wonderful experiences at your workshop was meeting Jeff Jones, um, your friend Jeff, and how Jeff showed the possibilities of dowsing where he just decided to not eat food anymore. I'd love you to share that story about Jeff to show what's possible. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, well actually, uh, Jeff, was in. he's in most of my local classes that I do. You know, you, you, uh, you did one uh, class with me here in... Uh, in yeah. uh, where we live well i'm still doing classes in the same town and i always invite him to come in and talk to the people well this goes back to january of 97 and he was in my class and i didn't know who he was uh, i never saw the man before and at the time i only knew how to energize one small glass of water uh that's as far as i had got with it at the time and he said, you're putting energy in water. And I said, well, yeah, I guess so. He said, well, if you're putting energy in it, I can put vitamins and minerals in the water. Said, well, I never thought of that, but you probably could. And that was 25 years ago, and he has not had a meal since. 
I mean, he might eat a few, uh, uh, eat some popcorn every now and then, uh, maybe corn chips or something like that. But uh, as far as eating a meal like you and I eat, no, he hadn't, he hadn't had a meal since. Uh, and he, at first, he had to energize his water the way that I had showed him. And then he progressed to the point, all he had to do was pick up a container of water and it's automatically energized. So uh, he actually gained weight. Uh, he's not a slim person at all. Um, and he's still living on just water. Uh, he is the most unusual man that I know of. There may be other people on the planet that do this. I've heard of them. I've just never met them. Uh, but, you know, he's, he may not be the only person on the planet that does this, but he's just a regular businessman. He's not some guru in a robe sitting in a lotus position, chaining arm all day or with his fingers together. He's out there working, running a business. Uh, so, um, to, to, you know, to see him, uh, he doesn't, he, he just looks like a regular businessman. And that's who he is. He doesn't pretend to be anybody else. Uh, it's just that he practices what he believes in and he wins. He's also uh, my, what I call my number one winner in prosperity. He has made a lot of money uh, with the methods that we use. And uh, he usually tells those stories when he's in class. Uh, one of the more outstanding stories was he was in, uh, in a mining business and he needed certain uh, uh, tools made for, uh, to build a piece of equipment. And he didn't know for sure that such a thing had ever been built. Well, we used dowsing and found out that yes, though what he was looking for had actually been manufactured somewhere. We found it in a barn, an old abandoned barn over in the state of North Carolina. He somehow managed to find it and he bought it for something like uh, one tenth of the value of it. I mean, that, that was one of our more, one of the first things we did that really got our attention. I mean, the odds of doing that is next to impossible, but he did it. And by thinking of what you want, instead of what you're afraid of, you attract what you want. Um, I don't know if you folks there in Australia have this problem or not, but we have it here where I live. The word fear is woven into the fabric of the conversation. Uh, people are afraid they're going to get COVID. Well, I'm not afraid of that. I don't even think about it. Yeah. I just ignore it. Uh, uh, I see no, see, we attract what we fear. Why? Because Einstein explained it real well, but people don't seem to understand it. He put it all in three words, energy follows thought. Well, if you're afraid of attracting COVID, you probably will. I, did, I pay no attention to it. I never wore a mask. I just, I, sometimes I was the only person in the grocery store without one, but I just totally ignored the whole thing. I And uh, it's, it's, this is why I don't have the problems most people have. Um, I just don't, I just don't worry about things. I do something about them. And what do you do? Well, you build what I call a bulletproof immune system. And I do it by, I don't put harmful food or drink in my body. I don't live on junk food. I eat, uh, I eat very simple. I, I actually, I grow most of the food myself that I eat and eat, eat very simple. Um, never had any drugs, alcohol, anything at all like that. So I've taken care of my body. I will be 78 years old next week. I'm still running a chainsaw, climbing mountains, uh, cutting wood, building fence, running a herd of cattle in the summertime. I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing for years. Haven't really slowed down any. 
uh, is because uh, I grew up with people that would say, oh, I'm getting older now. I just can't do what I used to do. I, I don't fall into that trap. I get up every day and walk outside and so thankful that I can climb mountains. I don't ever complain about doing hard work. I just am always thankful I can do it. And let uh, me uh, share something with you folks out there. If you bitch, whine, and complain about problems, you will continue to create problems. If you give thanks for what you have, you will be a lot better off. So I would suggest that every morning when you wake up, give thanks for a strong, healthy body. Give thanks for whatever you happen to have. Uh, I give thanks for a place to live out here in the wilderness. Uh, I give thanks for uh, good health, for friends, uh, for good food. I give, I've got my own water supply. I don't have to buy water. It comes right out of the ground. Uh, it's free. I give thanks for that. I found that if we will give thanks for things instead of bitching, whining, and complaining about what we don't have, our life is going to be a lot better. So that's one piece of advice right there that will change your life if you'll practice it. But all this stuff, Warren, is I, I know I repeat things because I've found that people don't always get it the first time. But all of these things have been said by philosophers of the past. But they seem to have been ignored a lot. And I gave two quotes a while ago. Think of a person the way they are, that they'll get worse. See them as it could be, they'll improve. Energy follows thought. Those things right there, are the, uh, that's the foundation of success. Simple as it is. Most good advice is real simple. You don't need a lot of words. There was an old Indian, that, uh, one time is, uh, I've quoted him, Chief, Chief Luther Standing Bear that says, it does not take many words to say to speak the truth. Sometimes it takes a while to explain it, but uh, the truth itself doesn't take many words. There's one. There's one question here from um, Andreas. He says, "Can you do energy with water, or you know, energize water to help your kids when they're constantly sick?" Well. In a word, yes, but you probably do need to do more than energize water. Now, I don't know anything about you or your kids, but I would suggest you check to see to what degree did they feel wanted when they were born. It is a question that I do every morning uh, in my energy clearing. I take people back in time to the moment they were born and remove any uh, negative beliefs that they were not wanted and turn that into a belief of being loved, wanted, accepted, and safe. See folks, we have the ability to go back in time and change things in the past. Uh, I don't wanna to get too deep in it right now because I don't wanna to stick to helping kids. But uh, if you, were programmed uh, by your parents or neighbor or society to be sick. The chances are you will get sick. That happened to me. As I was a kid, I grew up in a very good neighborhood, but they weren't good thinkers. So after church on Sunday, the main conversation was who's sick, who died, how bad the crops were. And what did I hear every Sunday? He has a cold. He'll keep it all winter. I was a good kid. I followed directions. I didn't know any better. Nobody was intending to do me harm. They just didn't know any better either. So I heard that I was sick. I had a cold. I would keep it all winter. When I finally learned how to use my mind and realized that I had been programmed to be sick, I changed that programming. I've had, I think, I've had a cold about one every 10 years for the last 50 years. 
but I had to change that myself. Nobody was going to do it for me. So I just had to uh, neutralize any suggestions that had ever been made to me about having a cold. And I gave myself the attitude that I have a bulletproof immune system. I just don't get sick. I stay, I don't really dwell on not getting sick. I dwell on staying well. That's why I tell you, when you get up every morning, give thanks for a strong, healthy body. It works. It's gonna help you more than all the medicine that you'll ever buy. So what I would say to you as a person that wrote this in, tell your kids how healthy they are. Now, if they're little kids, <clears throat> I would suggest when you put them to bed at night, uh, as they go to sleep, whisper to them kind of softly, you'll have a strong, healthy body. You are always healthy and happy. This is the way I program my kid. Uh, I would tell her as I put her to sleep at night, uh, all kind of positive affirmations. Why? Because they're in a low brain frequency and being in a low brain frequency allows them to accept suggestions. And you can call it brainwashing. It's actually a form of hypnotism. Uh, but you have the power to do this, so use it. Whatever you want kids to know, tell them that as you put them to sleep at night in a very calm voice. Tell them how intelligent they are. Tell them how what good, well-behaved kids they are. Tell them how healthy they are, how strong. See, we live in a society that beats people down instead of pick, picking people up. And it's especially rough on kids. I know that happened to me. Nobody intended to do me any harm. They just didn't know any better. They were talking to me the way their parents had talked to them. And it went back for generations. See, folks, we're all a product of our ancestors, and most of us needed better ancestors. We really did. So uh, that's about the best way I know to say it. Whatever you want your kids to believe, that's what you got to tell them. And if someone else is telling them about the diseases, just tell them most people are ignorant and don't know what they're talking about. Don't be afraid to contradict what society tells your kids. So that's that's the best way I know to answer that one. I love it. I I had a situation, Raymond, where one of my sons, who's actually on here tonight, um, William, who you met him a few some years ago, but he he was getting very asthmatic when he was three. So just before he went to sleep we were speaking into his um, ear that, that he was well loved, that he could relax and that he, that his mummy loved him and that everyone loved him. He woke up the next day, had no more asthma. Breathing was beautiful. Well, you did a miracle for him. You did more than all the medicine and the drugstore would do for him. I love stories like this. So are, are people writing you any questions? I'm assuming that's what's happening. Oh, yeah, plenty. Um, there's, <laughs> there's one very good question here, which I think you, could, you would like, Raymond. He says, Darren asks, can you help a dog that has had trauma and help them to stop from continuous fearful barking? Well, I think it's certainly possible because animals respond a lot like kids do. So uh, I would suggest that you just mentally send the dog a message to be quiet. Um, if, I wouldn't say stop barking because the barking probably might even trigger it more. So what you want them to do is to be quiet. So, uh, you always want to think of what you want them to do, not what you don't want them to do. And that works with animals and kids and everything else. So uh, imagination is uh, real strong. So imagine them being quiet. 
if you want a dog to behave, imagine them being uh, being uh, obedient and and uh, doing what you want them to do. So um, I think energy follows thought with animals the same it does with people. Yeah. Okay, what's the next one? It's a great question. Um, can you, um, this was a question I wanted to ask because you spoke about this before and you and I have done stuff on this, but like with partners or relationships or dating, you said you can check the integrity and compatibility of spirit guides and everyone has issues, Raymond, with, with marriages and with people on dating sites and all that. And yeah, that's just a question I've got that could help people. Like, is there some way, how, how do you check integrity or clear spirit guides incompatibility or check warning signs with dating or marriage problems that one is having? Well, a lot of people just married the wrong person. Uh, and that's because they didn't know the questions to ask before they got married. And one of the major questions is, what is the compatibility of your spirit guides? Well, they've already been married now and they don't really want to get a divorce, but they're not getting along. So we've had some really good success with this is we simply take away their bad spirit guides if in fact they have bad spirit guides. Now they may not have, but if they do, you say, how do you do that? You do it exactly the same way you do an exorcism. And I describe exorcism in detail in that uh, video called uh, Change Energy, Change Your Life. I actually do it for you. All right, now, um, getting rid of bad spirit guides is the same way. But the spirit guides may not be bad. They just may not be compatible. Well, this is what I've done. I remove the incompatible conditions of all the spirit guides and turn that into peace, respect, and compatibility. It's that simple. See, uh, I think folks have a idea that things have to be real complicated to do things like this. That's not true. The simpler you can keep it, the better off you're gonna be. So uh, just bring the spirit guides into compatibility with each other. Yeah. Now, like some people have certain characteristics that um, affects the other person. So you, in that case, you would see if you could get rid of the archetypes, archetype being a trait or a characteristic that affects a person's behavior. Like one person may have an archetype of talking too much and another person not being wanting to listen. Well, you probably would see if you could take away those, the archetypes of excessive talking and give them a archetype of being being quiet or being peaceful. Uh, see, uh, people don't really check out each other well enough before they get married. And uh, they go too much just on physical appearance or their feelings. And then to find out later that, well, uh, I, I don't know, I didn't know as much as I thought I knew about this person, or they, I didn't know they were going to be like this. Now, for any business deal that you're making or any major decision or even buying a vehicle or buying a house or whatever, right here's a very valuable question. Ask this, how much do I know compared to what I need to know? Um, so if you're going to get married or ask how much do I know about this person compared to what I need to know? You do the same thing uh, before going in business with someone or before buying anything. And many times you will probably find you don't know nearly enough as what you really need so, to know. So what's the percentage that's a good percentage? Like using asking that question, do you want to be getting 100%, 80% or what, what percentage? Well, 100% um, is ideal. Uh, you might be able to get by with 80%. And I would ask this question. Is the 80%, uh, well, let, let's just go back and say it like this. Let's say you only know 80% of what you need to know. I would ask, how significant is the remaining 20%? Is it real significant or is it insignificant? 
if it's insignificant, don't worry about it. If it's real significant, you better learn what it is before you make your move. And that's a yes or no question, right? Yes or no? Uh, no, that's a numerical question. Oh, yeah, that's a yes or no. Uh, yes. How significant is it? No, no, actually, that's a, a percentage question. Right. If it's 10% uh, significant, it's probably not worth b bothering. If it's 90% significant, yeah, you need to find out what it is. Yeah. So many people make decisions and contracts and buy things not knowing everything they need to know about the situation. Yeah. Yeah, the archetypes is very good. That's actually a really good one as well. Yeah, it can save you a lot of money and a lot of aggravation, too. Yeah. No, well, this has been really useful, Raymond. I mean, thank you, thank you so much for your time today. You know, it's been you've really you've really helped us, and be saying we could go for hours, but I think we'll kind of finish it now. But thank you so much. Do you have, do you have any okay. final thoughts to share to everyone? We'll say again, please. Do you have any final thoughts that you could share with everyone? Oh uh, well, not. Nothing except I really appreciate being invited to speak to you folks. It looks like we've got about 84 people now. Uh, and uh, I just uh, never know what we're going to talk about. Just whatever you bring up is where the conversation will go. So I just try to throw out the conversation uh, and information that uh, is useful to you. Uh, this hasn't been a real eloquent talk uh, by any means, uh, but hopefully I got the information across. Uh, sometimes I can make a, a real good talk and sometimes not. And here I had no idea where it was going. So I just kind of touched the questions as it came up. So uh, if you would care to get my monthly newsletter, it's free. Just go to RaymondGraceFoundation.org and ask for it. And uh, uh, April will mail it out to you. Uh, it's uh, just a mass mailing. Uh, we do it near the end of every month. And uh, if you want more information on what we do, go to RaymondGrace.us, uh, and uh, if you want to order anything, uh, get download. Please don't ask us to ship something physically to Australia because it's just going to cost you too much. And the downloads, uh, that, there's no shipping there, so that, that makes that economical. We try to do things economical for people. So I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to everybody today. and. Um, if you want to do this again sometime, uh, let me know and we'll see what we can do. So I would love that. Yes. If you celebrate yeah. Christmas, I hope you have a good one. You too, Raymond. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Have a, have a good day. Have a good day. Bye for now. Okay, well, I hope everyone really got great value from that. Um, Raymond was certainly... Um, he always blows my mind every time he speaks. He's just a gift of great wisdom. And it was a bit of a kick for me, and I'm sure William, to remind us about where, when you, you know, when we were doing a lot of work um, regularly to raise the consciousness and or to raise the energy of our politicians and scanning them for spirits and negative entities. And when we were doing it, we were amazed at what we were seeing happening. You know, we were seeing you know, we were seeing things improve and all kinds of stuff. So it's really good to do that and see what's possible. And as I was sharing, you know, I've been doing various projects and often touching base with Raymond and he worked on that one about breaking the curse off females. And of course, our biggest one we've been working on is um, West Australia to really raise our energy and raise our, uh, raise our food. And um, it's been working. So we, of course, are going to be doing Doing, um, my plan is to get this, get some kind of group happening again and get some regular energy work happening on our state. I planned to do it last year, but I feel now it's definitely coming towards the time. So if anyone for their particular state really feels they want to be involved, then yeah, look, just stay tuned. We'll let you know. Because um, I do think our, our states need a fair bit of work. And I think the lessons I want to share with everyone is what he was saying about projecting onto people. And we do this all the time. We we curse people without even realizing we're doing it. Like, 
you sit there and say, my wife is this, or my husband is this. And look, I'll own the fact that I was really bad. I remember there were some things that were being said, you know, and like my business partner, Grace, and Grace is amazing. But I remember at one stage I was saying, oh, Grace is like this or like that. And then I remember remembering what Raymond said about some months ago. And I thought, what if rather than focusing on where Grace is at and where my sons are at, I focus on where I'd like her to be in terms of, you know, right, you know, working with me more closely um, and us working better together as director, because she's just amazing. Whenever we work well together, we see acceleration in our stuff. And I, I never told Grace this until tonight, so she just heard it. But I started doing that, you know, changing how I was seeing her. And it was amazing to watch what actually happened. And doing that with people around my life, I started to actually look at people how I want them to be. And that is why those who know me notice I don't really say bad stuff about the politicians in the state I live in. I don't do it. And the reason why is if I start sitting here insulting our leader, Mark McGowan and others, and I say bad things about him, basically I'm just reinforcing that archetype, you know, and doing that. So I don't do that. I'm always looking, and it's not easy to do it for a politician to try to see our, our, our leadership as to who they could be and who they're meant to be. And I love what Raymond said about putting the spirit of truth in them. I thought that's something that we're going to work on because what happens is we, we feel energy. We're all interconnected and quantum science teaches this. So when we impress energy, they pick it up and it's the strongest energy. And when you think about it, our dear old politicians are getting every kind of negative energy hitting them from everyone's horrible thought projections against them. So I think, well, I don't particularly want to be contributing to that, that thing either. Now, I don't know exactly how much I can change by doing that, but I do believe that the work we've done in that and really how we speak and how we project our politicians made a difference. And I do, that's a challenge I would give to people, you know, and it doesn't mean you don't see someone's actions and call it evil and needs to be dealt with, but people can, but, but basically with continuing to focus on what you don't want, like focusing on a great reset and, we're going to be this and we're going to lose everything and we're going to have our money taken off. And well, I think what we've learned from Raymond tonight, if we focus on that enough, I'm sure we'll get our wish. Whereas I think a better thing to do is what, why could not, you know, and I've, I've always said to, and why not West Australia where we live be a completely separate sovereign, independently functioning place from whatever goes on in the rest of the world. And it's, Interesting about the possibilities to this work, and he's Raymond's got me thinking of projects I want to address now. You know, about you know the bigger bigger projects and what we've tried before about recession, about the Great Reset, and about things that we could possibly do to bring some big changes over here by changing the way we see things and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, someone asked about other states of Australia. Look, I'm a bit like Raymond. I think where I've come to. My first priority is always my own family, which means my family is my state, but I'm very willing to help others who want to take that up for their own state and do this work. And I know a few people have mentioned it. So that's why we're going to offer it. Like if your state or your country, you want to do that, I'll happily help, you know. My first priority is my own state and the people of my state. That is my number one you know, responsibility to, you know, help and in a way serve the people of, of, of the state that I live in in shamanic stuff and help help West Australia and help the people who live here. And that's, and no doubt some of you feel the same about your particular place. And that was why I was asked, you know, are you going to leave Australia? I said, you know, I would miss this for the world. I said, I see the best opportunity I've ever had in my life to, to do something that's going to be miraculous with, with Australia. And I haven't lost faith for a minute that, we can that we can see some big big change in our states no matter what goes on in the rest of the world and see a massive raising of prosperity consciousness well-being and in the citizens of where we live in so the other thing raymond says it's very different to most other shamans you would have heard is to is the ability is many schools will tell you you can't really impress upon people about their permission and he's saying well that's not true i mean evil people or, or who are engaging in evil actions you can i mean as I see it, if our politicians in my state are affecting my way of life, I have every right to impress upon them whatever the fuck I want because they're impressing upon me with their laws every single day. So whatever laws they pass, impress upon me. Whatever mandates they pass, impress upon my way of life 
and my freedom of movement. So I can certainly impress upon their energy and get them seeing them in a different archetype and seeing them operating in truth and seeing them operate in the spirit of fairness and the spirit of things like that. So I don't know what everyone else is thinking, but I hope when everyone's going to go away tonight with some real inspired with the possibilities of what you can do for yourself and for your each other. And especially what he said about kids. So many people speak such terrible stuff over their kids and break that cycle today. You know, if you've got kids and they're playing up, don't don't say things like you've got ADHD. Don't go around saying all that. I mean, what what people try to do that with my son, William, and my statement was always like, no, he's just a very sensitive, highly spiritual, brilliant young man. And people just don't understand him. That was how and that was what I said about him. And I told him that. And now. Everyone who knows William, that's how he's living his life. He's a very brilliant, very res mature, responsible young man who I'm very proud of. And he's and he's just very smart and very sensitive and very spiritual. So don't speak stuff over your kids. You know, it doesn't mean that you don't, you know, get them assistance and times like that when you need it. But by and large, a lot of the time, we're just trying to avoid dealing with stuff we don't want to avoid in, like our child is hard work or I don't really or oh, their social embarrassment rather than work with their energy you know um generally kids that are very active and normally just highly sensitive highly intelligent and they feel everything so it's a great great call to yeah and the thing he said about what you speak over them before they sleep this was something i was constantly doing with our sons i spoke over them constantly prosperity and wealth from when they were young i always said to edward you're going to be the Bub warren buffett of our family you're going to build a great empire and build wealth it's all over you, my friend. That's, that's your calling. And one of my sons always said to him, you're born to be a champion because that's what I call him. And you just see how they behave. Like one of them, Edward, who some of you have seen, is driven by that. He's absolutely driven by wealth and driven by, you know, building an empire, but he wants to make a difference. He wants to help you get financially abundant, you know? And a lot of it can be the conditioning you can do that. And you can do that with the people in your state as well. We can really make a difference, everyone. And really go away with this tonight and realize we can make a really big fucking difference and um and change our perception and our thoughts so thanks again for coming everyone i really appreciate you coming and it's just a wonderful wonderful moment for me to see so many people wanting to learn this kind of work and it, you know david hawkins once said you just need a small critical mass to make a difference in a country or, or state you know and raise our energy and raise our consciousness and everything so Gosh, I'm telling you, if everyone in this webinar went away and started applying what Raymond said. So look, we'll definitely do some kind of more webinars on this and offer it on dowsing and education and that. I've done it previously and let everyone know. And those who are interested can come along and get the word out so we can all start learning to raise energy and make a difference. So who'd be interested in that if we did something teaching on that dowsing, teaching on the energy, and we teach you to self-empower and what we would just do is charge a very, you know, reasonable kind of fee, like what Raymond does, something that can be used to, you know, for the work. That's how I would do it to kind of fund the work that we're doing and getting the, getting the message out, um, you know, because right now philanthropy and making a difference in our country and state is what, what drives me. And I think it's a whole new perspective. And one of my perspectives I created for myself is what if I saw myself as a servant to our our leaders of our state not you know that's how i saw it we're here to help them by raising the energy and make their job easier and i've noticed the difference it's already made in my own prosperity and general state of happiness and sense with the government since i've been doing that so great lots of people keep keep informed we'll let you all know on the awakening within and we'll put it on the telegram groups and things like that and we'll keep everyone informed and yeah look i'm sure i can get raymond to come and do another one and we'll you know, if, if I, I'll just tell him we won't record it and we'll probably do some work on energy of cities um, and, but just not record it. So thanks everyone. See you later.